Somebody asked me, how do you cut a piece of wood square using a pan or saw? Well, some people like to use a radial arm saw, uh, like this one here, yes. Or some people like to use a chop saw. Or some people got a miter saw, like this renegated one just here. And some people like to use a smaller chop saw like this one over here. As you can see, I don't use them very much. No, oh, <laughs> if we're gonna be using a machine, it would be the Rage Alarm saw. But if I'm gonna do it by hand, I would be using my distant pan and saw. So allow me to show you <laughs> how I make sure that I get a reasonably good cut. Let me just pop you back in there, all right? now. Ideally, you want something like this, right? A sawhorse of some description, like this, right? This one we made on this channel, okay? And it's actually quite a good sawhorse. Now, the thing is, you see, lots of sawhorses are really narrow in the top, whereas this one is around, well, about seven inches wide. It's a piece of old deal on the top. Now, the thing is, that is square, perfectly square, okay? So if I grab a square, which happens to be over there. <laughs> right there. Okay, like this for a bone chestament square. And I plug that on the end there, like that, okay? All you can see that is square, right? Now, that's the perfect visual aid. But you haven't always got that visual aid. So you need your technique with your saw, okay? One thing you saw ideally wants to be sharp, and this one is not. So I thought maybe before I do sharpen it, it might make it. A more how to put it accurate video. Now it doesn't matter if you've got a resharpable saw like this distant or a well one of them throwaway things like a Sandvik 244 or something like that or one of the jack saws with the orange handles. It don't matter. The technique's pretty much the same apart from you'll find that is a darn so easier to get a straight cut or you know a perpendicular cut, a 90 degree cut with a saw like this because of stiffness in the blade you see. So Okay, so as I say, for instance, let's start with this piece here. No, let's check that one. Let's start with this one instead, right? The wider one. Now, the thing is, when you actually want to cross cut a wide board like this, okay, you would mark it with your pencil, wouldn't you? Yeah, come down here, just so you can see. All right, let's get a bit closer. That's what we'll do, all right? I'm not editing this video, just so you know. <laughs> I'm lazy like that. So, you're obviously going to mark where you want your cut to be, you then transfer those marks down the edge of your board, like so. Okay, thereabouts, like that. And then same on that one there. Don't worry about the back, because you can't see the back. And that, that'd be your visual guide, or where you're gonna be cutting with your panel saw. Now there are other types of guides out there, which I have shown on this channel, little blocks of wood with magnets and all that sort of stuff, which definitely, definitely help. I was surprised, I really was. But, Let's say, for instance, right, we're going to be cutting a, a narrower piece of wood, like this one, you see. Now, I'll explain why I'm, I'm doing this in a second. You'll just give you an idea. But first of all, let's just mark it. Right? I want to cut, say, for instance, that off there. It's, it's random. I know it's random. So, and then I'm going to transfer those marks. Just a bit of older pallet wood is all it is. <laughs> Whatever I can find kicking about. And I'll transfer that mark over here as well. Both edges again look just like I did the other board. Okay. Now, if you are experienced with a panel saw, a lot of the time you ain't got to worry. Once you get the hang of it, you just you just go for it. And nine times out of ten, you're going to get it right. In fact, I can cut a 45 just by the, ref you know, the reflection in the panel saw. There's a video on there of how to do that on this channel. So let's go back over there. Let's show my, my point, uh, my uh, little technique. If I was going to be, uh, argument's sake, I'm going to cut this wide board. Now, the, a wide board is easier to cut than a narrow board, okay? You say, why is that? You've got to cut longer. Well, there is that too, but you've got this visual aid with the line. You can eye up your saw with that line. So you've got much more uh, distance to make sure that you are on track. You can eye that up. Whereas a short, a narrower board, you don't have that um, privilege. No. Now, if it's a small board like this, you, you need to, to clamp it down. Now, I line this up with my saw, saw horse here. Or saw, 
okay like that and then I'll just clamp that down like so making sure the clamp doesn't interfere with where I'm going to be cutting I don't want to take the edge off the saw you see now the thing is you have a cut side and you have the cut line itself well you need to make sure you're cutting on the right side of the line so you don't end up causing yourself any grief so just mark the side you want to cut on like so and then what I do is I use the back of the saw here okay and I bring it up because it's usually quite sharp the back of the saw because you don't use it as much as the rest of the saw that portion of the saw is generally more worn than the tip and the heel than the toe and the heel yeah toe and the heel so so I'll bring it back a few strokes say so three strokes to get that start like so and I'll be ironing it up downwards with my line that in that direction okay and then I'll make a few downward strokes. At that point, you don't really need your finger anywhere near it, because at the start, I was using it, as you saw, as, as you saw, <laughs> as a guide, right? <laughs> you don't want to carry on doing that, though, no. because especially if, you, um, especially if you're cutting something like Douglas fir, there's a possibility, especially at the beginning, the, the saw's got to jump out of the slot and slice your finger. Been there, done that, and it hurts. So don't do it. So move your hand out of the way, okay? Holding it down like so, or putting your knee on it, or whatever. If your board is longer, this is a short board, so there's no point. All I want to do is put my weight on the actual sawing stool. I've got my second set of hands in, in the form of a clamp. So as I bring it forwards, I'll then start striking down, iron that saw up, plumb with that line, and then make my cut. But as I make my cut, I'm actually bring the saw back and I'm ironing it up my line where I want the saw to be and yes it is blunt bringing my stroke backwards and forwards or up and down as long as I can manage in other words a nice long stroke using as much of the saw as possible it is not a race just allow the saw to do its job and as I bring that down, I'm still ironing up with this back line. Not constantly, but I'm regularly checking it. It's like when you're driving a car and you're coming, you know, you're doing your driving lesson and you're coming up to a junction and you've got to check your mirrors. Do, 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 and down. You know how it goes. And don't forget to actually check the line. Now, this board's easy, like I said, because it's wider. And the line is longer, so I have got that official guide. Now, don't forget when you get towards the end of your cut to, well, slow down, okay? But also check your plumb, making sure you are lining up with your line at the back of your cut as well. And then through slow strokes, holding your piece of wood like so, and then you made your cut. Now, hopefully, your cut at that stage is going to be, <laughs> it's going to be square. And please, I'm not editing this video. I'm not going to be like, well, I, can't, I was watching uh, a YouTuber. I forgot his name, that Saw Winery or Saw Winery. Oh, yeah, it, it, he's an older guy, he's got 50 years of experience. I, I, I can't, so many times I've seen him make these, these videos, right? <laughs> and it's clearly all on skew if and that. And he's kind of like, being very careful how he positions his piece of wood you can't even see if it's square you know and the other day he did one where he's passed it through a plane and had a flattened um a board with a twist in it, it I, i'm sure that's more twisted when he finished <laughs> when he started well not quite but it was a little bit better but it was a uh, yeah it, it was quite funny to watch it was like, almost like you're trying to make out that was perfect that wasn't it was way off anyway as you can see that is yeah, that's not bad pretty it's pretty much square there's a little curve in it but you see what you do is, when you're working with things like hand tools, I'll then use a shooting board with a hand plane. I'll pull out my shooting board, use a hand plane to throw it up. And then you have a beautiful, smooth finish. You can glue it, you can joint it, you can do whatever you want with it, right? So that's how I'll do it if I'm doing a wider board. But where it gets more complicated and harder is when your board is narrow. That is where this saw, sawing horse, or saw horse, or stool stools, anyway, what this, thing I'm sitting on is really important in that it has a wide top. That is my visual guide. So I'll do exactly the same. I'll place my piece of wood 
line with this edge, like so. And then grab my clamp and clamp it down because it's an extra pair of hands. Now, if, for instance, you uh, cut a piece of wood uh, that's longer, you just put your knee on it if you want, if that's, if that's your thing. Yeah. But I'm using a clamp. Yeah, and I'm, I've moved it. <laughs> you want that in line with that edge, all right? If it's in line with that edge, okay, your cut will be perpendicular. It will be square. Yeah, there you go. So, okay, I've got my line there. got my line down here. And I'll basically start my cut exactly the same way as before. But do you know what I didn't do on my fir the first uh, demonstration? I didn't oh, lube my tool. Always lube your tool. All right? Ask the missus, she knows. So lube your tool like so. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> and um, just wax it basically. Uh, this, this all no power from wax works. You can use beeswax if you like, you know, whatever you like. You can get tool wax. There's all sorts of waxes you can use. But, you know, just ordinary uh, power from wax works a treat. But don't forget, if you're going to be that cut line, uh, if you are going to be gluing it, well, then make sure you clean off the wax <laughs> for obvious reasons. It's like a release agent, you know. So, with this particular piece of wood, it's easier. Now, it's about... <laughs> Oh, it's about a third narrower than, than this piece, okay? I'm going to do exactly the same thing again regarding the start of it. I'm going to put my knee on the actual saw horse itself so it doesn't move. Use my thumb as a guide, making sure I'm on the right side of the line. Mark it if it makes you happier so you don't end up making the boob. All right, remember you can remove more material, but it's a lot harder to stick it back on again. So let's bring the saw back through cuts on that corner, on the arras, yeah? Let's do that three times, especially if you're not used to a panel saw, if you're just learning. All right, so I've made that start on my cut. And now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring you closer. That's what I'm going to do, because I've shown you foot far away already. So let's show you close up. Now, I'm not editing this video, so it is what it is. I just hope it helps somebody. That's what I hope. That's my main that's my main thing, you know. Some people find it difficult, you see. But the main thing, what I was the main thing I think you need to think about, or is to control yourself. It's so easy. Go, you know, I've got to get through. I can't get through. I've got to get through. I've got to get. Yeah, no. Just take control, okay? So bring it back three times, like I said. All right. Once you've done that, you've then got enough uh, distance on your actual uh, starter cut. To, st to support the saw back, okay? Obviously, obviously, when you try and push it down, it'll be all like jagged. Now, you don't want to go like that. You don't want to go um, like that, okay? You can make it as a part of the cut if you want to try and correct yourself, but you shouldn't really need to. So, I'm making my saw cuts down. I'm going to eye up with that line, making sure I'm plumb, and then I'm bringing the saw blade back as far as I can without it coming out of the uh, of the slot, sometimes it'll be that far, sometimes it'll be that far, you know. Don't worry about it, but you do want to try and use as much of the saw as you possibly can. Now, one of the benefits of having a good saw like this distant is the distance between there and there. That is your stability. So when you see a lot of those cheap throwaway type saws, they're very narrow. The blade only comes up to about there. And unfortunately, it provides you very little stability and there's very little rigid in the actual blade itself. If you can put the time into it and learn how to sharpen a panel saw like this, to start, it's, well, it's gratifying. It, 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 makes you, it puts you in more connection with the work. It's like sharpening your chisels and you're you know, and you're peeling the hair off the back of your hand. It makes you feel good. Do you know what I mean? It really does. But when you sort of buy something off the shelf and it's a bit, you know, mediocre, it's not a good tool to use. Right? And the thing is, you see, once you buy a tool like this one, you, in your lifetime, you might get through two of them if you're on the tools. Right? You might get through a couple of them. But these things last forever. If you look after them, they, you know, look at that one. I've had this one donkey's ears. Still got loads of meat in it, you know, because even though they're uh, resharpened and the teeth aren't as hard, so the, so the edge won't last as long, 
It still lasts a very long time. <laughs> nice, long, smooth strokes. Iron up, like I said before, to your plum. But you see, the other thing is, you see, what I'm actually doing is eyeing up with the sawhorse, not with my line. I did start with, but all along, all I've been doing is making sure the saw is parallel with the at end of the saw horse, not the wood, not the line of wood. The problem is, you see, when your wood gets narrow, you've got nothing to, there's less to uh, uh, act as a guide, a visual guide. <laughs> Slow down, slightly same as before. And then hopefully, <laughs> I've got to get ready down low now, haven't I? Uh, hopefully, it is square. So what I was using was a square on the end here, and this is about seven inches, six to seven inches, yeah, six to seven inches wide, which is obviously wider than that. And that is my visual guide with the panel saw. Now it's really handy, you see, because when you get the hang of it, you won't be putting lines across your piece of wood. You just put a mark. That's where I want to put a cut. You won't be putting lines down the edges of your board, you see? And you get a bit of experience behind you, you'll just literally just clamp it on there or put your knee on it if the board's not long enough, and you'll cut it from that mark parallel with the end of your sawhorse. And when you get ready, you don't need to worry about that, you just do it. It's People say, oh, I'm never going to be able to do that, you know. You will. You, you just will. You know, it's, it's a mechanical action with your body, uh, what do you call it, muscle memory, that's what it is, it's like muscle memory and you'll get a nice square cut. Hopefully I'm not going to embarrass myself when I actually see if this is square. <laughs> if I've cocked it up, I'll tell you. No, I haven't, see? You know, so you can do it just with a handsaw. Okay, I've been doing donkey's years, I've got experience, and it's also true that way as well, you see? I'm not lying to you, you see this proof? So, oh, yes, obviously there's an argument for using the chop saw and the radio arm saws. I use them daily. But if you just want to, you know, get back to earth, you know, and enjoy the experience of, of cutting wood with a panel saw, which, oh, here it is, <laughs> with a panel saw like this distant, it's just nice, you know. It slows you down. And instead of woodworking actually being part of a rat race, it actually becomes a part of your therapy instead. We, we need to slow down and take on board uh, what's really important. And I think it's actually how it makes you feel. How does woodwork or woodworking make you feel? And that's one of the reasons I'm not keen on pocket screws. I understand and I get why they're popular. I, I, I get it, I understand it. it is, you could say it's a gateway into woodworking. I actually think it's a, a block. Because what happens is people tend to take the route of least resistance and they stick with it just because it's easy. Oh, I just made this. I just made that. It's, you haven't really learned anything. You learn how to butt joint. You learn how to cut pieces of wood to length. To start with, yeah, okay, fair enough. But I still think that people should really just... Oh, okay, I'm being a purist, and maybe I'm being a little bit old-fashioned, but I just... Oh. For me, I love woodworking, okay? I absolutely love it. I don't do make as many things as I used to, but I just love the experience of it, and I just love the... Just to create something, where it would be just the joint that holds the two pieces of wood together. I don't feel there's any passion in pocket holes, in pocket hole screws, or any method of joinery like that. Even though I've got a festival domino down there, I use it a lot because it's useful and does a good job. But you see, I wouldn't say it's passion. No, it's just to get the job done and earn the money. But if you're actually a woodworker making things for yourself, well, if, it, you know, if you want some satisfaction in your work, if you stand back and have a bit of pride in that, do you really have pride in your work when you've got pocket hole screws? I don't get that. Sorry, I know a lot of people use them. Probably a lot of people on this channel use them. But I, I 
you know, it's not, I don't, I don't hate them, but I think they're overused. I really do. They just need to be used for everything. And a lot of people use them wrong. You know, where the screws are virtually going, you know, pointing in the wrong direction, so they're too close to the edge of the board. You know, um, I'm not a lover. That's one of the reasons I, I love hand tools. And there are other woodworking channels, such as Wood Boy Wright and uh, Rex Crew. They predominantly just do only, um, you know, their videos, hand tool. And if you see what I've got up there, I promise you, I use hand tool. That's what I do. So, you know, if you can't get hold of a decent panel saw, all right, which you can, because Spare and Jack can still make reasonably priced versions of these, and actually a good bit of steel on them, and nothing wrong with them, really. You might want to tweak the hand, the toe, and what have you, to, to suit you. But um, apart from that, they're a good tool, you know, and uh, definitely worth worth a shot. It's not difficult, you know. If not, you know, find yourself an old one. Because you'll find it a car boot or something like that. Or maybe a uh, grandparent might have been sticking in a shed. It might be covered in rust. It might look a bit like this one, which needs restoring, you know. But it's still a good tool. And actually, I think that is a Sparrow Jackson. Yeah, that is a Sparrow Jackson. That's an old one. <laughs> anyway, time for me to go. It's like say toodaloo, you know. Toodaloo.